I honestly don't know where to even start with this vlog. I feel like I have so much to catch you guys up on. I, I feel like this is gonna be a real story time. And like, where do we honestly start? Let's start with, hello everyone, how are we all? Welcome back to the vlog. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. And I'm so excited to be sitting here in my new home talking to all of you. This week has been a whirlwind and I have just been so looking forward to this point, sitting on the floor and catching up with all of you. Guys, I honestly feel like I've been keeping like the biggest secret from you all and I felt so terrible about it. But in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly what's been going on and where it is I'm sitting. I'd also like to say, I am sorry for how echoey it is. Truthfully, I don't have a lot of furniture and the space is quite empty, so it is a little bit echoey, but I'm hoping it's not gonna sound too bad on camera. Where do I even begin? I feel like I need to begin by telling you all, after three years of trying, I finally, finally have bought my own home. I can honestly cry. <laughs> like, it's been emotional, let me tell you. It's been a wild ride. I wouldn't change any of it for the world, to be honest. I feel like everything has worked out exactly how it was meant to. And as many of you already know this about me, I'm such a big believer that things happen when they're meant to happen. And this was meant to happen for me now and not three years ago when I first tried to make it happen. Can you hear all the birds, by the way? You might realize that I'm no longer in central London and I've moved a little bit further out. There's been lots of changes and I'm already loving them. I did my makeup this morning and washed my hair um, in this house. Like I had a shower here for the first time, even though I got the keys five days ago. I haven't actually washed my hair until today because life has been a lot, you know? But as I was doing my makeup, I was listening to the birds out of the window that I had open and I got a bit teary. Like I just feel so emotional and so grateful for the fact that like my dream has come true and I've bought a house in the area that I've always loved. And I just honestly, I feel like I could cry. Like I feel like I've felt so emotional over the last, you know, week. Oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna get upset. Let me pull myself together. Truthfully, I've had a very emotional few months. You guys would have probably watched that vlog where I had a bit of a breakdown. Um, everything's been a lot, but I'm now not crying through stress. I'm crying like happy tears. Um, and I'm just so, so, so grateful for all of you and everything. So I actually have vlogged some of the moving process. So you are gonna get a vlog after I've spoken to you all. Um, but moving was a lot more stressful than I thought it was gonna be. Well, I always thought it was gonna be stressful, but I thought I was gonna be able to vlog the whole thing. And truthfully, I could not. Um, but I did pick up my camera, which we're gonna definitely go to that part in a bit. But first of all, I just wanna explain how we ended up here when I found this house. Because I feel like I've been very secretive about it all and I want to explain why. Before I start, I think I just want to move the camera just slightly. I feel like the light might be slightly better here or maybe it's exactly the same. I'm unsure. I moved a little bit further back and hopefully the sun won't be so in my eyes. But this is going to be a real story time. I'm going to try and keep it as short and sweet and as quick as possible so then we can get on with the rest of the vlog. But I feel like I just need to get you all up to date, refresh your memories of how we got here. So, rewind to four years ago, June 2020. Some of you might remember that I tried to buy a house in Kent, which is where my parents live and it is where I'm from. The reason I did that is because COVID had just hit. I felt like it was a sensible thing to do and I felt that I just should buy a house in the area that I'm from. I tried to do it, but because I'm self-employed, it's basically just harder to prove stable income. And really the advice I was given was just to go away for a few years and come back and then try again. So at that point, I was left with a decision to make and that was where was I going to live in the meantime? And I had three options. It was either stay at home with my parents, which to be honest, when I think back now, it wouldn't have been a bad option at all. It'd be rent in the area that my parents lived or move to London. And I just felt like it was the perfect opportunity to go and live my London girl life. I'd always had big dreams of doing that. I had tried to do it pre-COVID, but as I said, COVID kind of made me think I need to be a little bit more sensible, stay near my family and all of those things. But 
Given these were my three options, I thought, right, let's move to London. And as many of you know, that is exactly what I did because it's where I've been living for the last three years. So like the light has changed again. I mean, it's a great thing that my house is so sunny, but I feel like I'm gonna end up in the corner. Okay, let's try again here. So as I've already said, I've been living in London the last three years and genuinely I have had the best time ever. Even though it's cost me a fortune, I've spent so much money on rent. The money was so well spent because I've enjoyed every single minute of it. I had so much fun. I really, as I've already said, got to live my London girl life, which I always dreamed of living and it was fab but what i did learn from living in london was it wasn't really for me i loved it it had loads of benefits but i missed the countryside i missed seeing greenery i missed hearing the birds sing and even though i like the london life you know to dip in and out of it wasn't where i saw myself for any length of time. So around 18 months ago, I started looking at properties in Surrey. And some of you might remember, I found a place that I loved so much. It was renovated to perfection, but it wasn't really on the best street. It was kind of like the best house on a not so great street. And because it had been extended to an inch of its life, there wasn't anything I could have done to it to have added any value. So it was kind of like my heart was saying buy it because I loved it. It was an easy thing to sort of buy and move into, but my head was saying, this is a bad buy and you'll never make, well, you'll probably make money on it with inflation, but you know, it wouldn't be the best buy financially. So I did put an offer in, the offer got rejected. I put in quite a bit under the asking price. I did tell you the story, so I don't really want to repeat myself, but the property ended up coming back on the market six months later because the sale fell through. And at this point, we were now at February 2023. So basically a whole year ago. And I went to go and view another house. This was one that needed completely renovating, but it was a great buy. There was so much potential and I put in an offer, it got accepted. And in April, the house fell through. This time it was from no fault of my own. It fell through because the house itself had lots of issues, mainly to do with the roof insulation. And I then started feeling quite overwhelmed with the fact that it needed so much doing to it. It would have probably taken a year to renovate financially. It was gonna be a big, big thing to do. Of course, in the end, it fell through through faults of not my own, but I was kind of happy it happened. Like I said, I believe everything happens for a reason and I don't think that was my house. So from April of last year until November, I lived on right move, okay? Every minute of every day, I'm on right move, refreshing it. I had all of the alerts on. I feel like every estate agent in a 20 mile radius hated me and because I just used to call up all the time seeing if anything new had come on the market. And truthfully, there was nothing. I don't think I viewed a single house from April until when I viewed this, which was the end of November. And a quick storyline behind this house, I was actually at my parents, once again, refreshing right move, and it had been added, it said the day before I'd seen it. And I saw it and I thought, wow, this ticks a lot of boxes. It's the area that I like. It's got loads of things that I wanted because in the end I've become very fussy with what I wanted, which was becoming an issue because it's so rare that something ticks everything you're looking for, you know? Anyway, I called up the estate agents and they said it had sold yesterday to a cash buyer. I said, it's only been on for 24 hours. And they were like, well, it's a good buy, you know, it's gone. And I was gutted, but I said, look, take my number. And you never know, it might fall through, but usually with cash buyers, it doesn't because there's no mortgage involved and all the rest of it. So I kept checking, it went like subject to contract and all of those things. And I thought, well, that's the end of that one, it's gone. But then it was a Sunday night, I remember, it was about two weeks later. It was one in the morning because I swear sometimes I have insomnia and the house popped into my head. And I thought, you know, what? I'm just gonna go online and look and see if it's still there, if it's sold or like what, stage it's at now and as i went looking for it i saw that it'd come back on the market so the sale had fallen through but the estate agents they never called me but the first thing i did in the morning it was call them i booked a viewing i saw it i think it was that thursday so i called on the sunday i saw it on the thursday i viewed it on my own and i loved it but it felt like such a big decision to make on my own so i asked for another viewing and on the saturday Reese and my parents came to view it with me. They loved it as much as me. I put in an offer, my offer got accepted. And by now, I think we were very early December. But something I haven't told you yet, 
was the fact that my landlord in the flat I lived in in Chelsea, which is where I've lived for three years, but I never told you that because obviously I like to keep where I live a little bit of a secret, but I did live in Chelsea. But my landlord in, I think it was like late October, had told me he wanted to sell my flat. Well, not him personally, but the agency that I rented through told me that he wanted to sell and that I needed to be out by the 24th of Feb. So the fact I then found this house not so long after, I was like, all of the stars are aligning and this could really work out, but that is very tight to be able to sort of put in an offer, the sale go through and everyone be moved by the 24th of Feb. I mean, it shouldn't be, really it should be quite quick, but buying a house is quite a lengthy process in the UK for whatever reason, especially if there's a chain involved, like then it can go on for months, sometimes even like, years but luckily with my situation there was no chain involved so i put in an offer beginning of december it got accepted and since then it's just been extremely stressful to say the least i didn't really know if everything was going to fall into place on time but it did i got the keys to this house the day before i needed to be out of my apartment and the day that i needed to be out of my apartment all of my stuff got moved to the house and everything worked out perfectly and I can't really believe it and that's why I say I'm always such a big believer that everything happens exactly when it's meant to happen and the reason I've been so secretive about everything the last few months and I kept saying like I'm moving but I don't know where to was because number one I truly believe in a house sale you never really know if the house is yours until the keys are in your hand like it can all fall through at the last minute and everything can go completely tits up. And I felt like I didn't want to say again on like my channel that I'm buying a house and then it not happen. Because, you know, it just, it kind of makes you look a little bit silly as well, doesn't it? And I do also think in the last few years, especially, I have become, I'm very superstitious, okay? There's lots of things that have gone on over the last week, which I feel like I need to tell you all about as well. But I have become like a big believer of evil eye and even though I know that so many of you have my best interests at heart and like you always root for me and you support me and I love you all beyond belief and like I tell you all of the time there are also people out there that you know don't always want that for you and sometimes I just feel like important information especially when like you manifest things and you believe in that sort of thing you're always told to just not tell anyone until it happens and even though I feel like I struggle with that and I, of course I told like my close friends and my family I have kept this really close to my chest until it's all gone through and obviously now it's gone through I have my keys I have my house I'm officially a homeowner and I feel like I can shout it from the rooftops because in like the non-cringiest way and like also non-big-headed way like I don't want any of you thinking that like I'm rubbing this in your faces at all but I'm so fucking proud of myself sorry about my French but I didn't need to swear then sorry mum but I am I am proud of myself and I very very rarely ever say anything like that and of course buying a house doesn't like determine your success in life or you know anything like that because some people see that buying a house just gets you into debt or like all of those things but it's just been a goal of mine for so many years to be able to do this and I do feel proud of myself that I've finally been able to do it um, and that's why I just want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for always rooting for me for always just like supporting me watching my videos I just cannot thank you all enough and I'm so excited to bring you on this journey to kind of show you around and like I feel like this is a really a new chapter and I've got such great feelings that it's gonna be a good one. Anyway, on that note, I hope I've explained things and now things make a little bit more sense, but we're now gonna go back in time to me, I wanna say like checking out of my apartment. It sounds like I lived in a hotel, I didn't, but I was waiting for inventory and I was about to hand back over my keys. So we're gonna go back in time, I'm gonna give you an apartment tour and I'm gonna show you what's been going on for the last five days. My hair right now is kind of giving Hagrid my life is giving chaotic and this flat is sounding very echoey. But guys, it is officially moving day and I plan to film the entire move, but I've actually never moved properly before in my life. And it is only today that I've realized how incredibly stressful it is to move. Like this morning was intense. I don't actually even think intense is a strong enough word. Like it was a lot. 
but we've almost made it. I'm currently waiting for the inventory people to get to my flat for me to hand back the keys. I can't believe that I'm leaving this place. It has been my home for three years. I feel a little bit emotional, I can't lie. I feel like I've grown so much as a person and that sounds very cliche, doesn't it? But this was my first ever home on my own after moving out of my parents' home. And I was 27, I think, when I got the keys here. I am now 30. I feel so incredibly lucky that I got to live my London girl life, you know? I feel like if you'd have said to me five, six years ago that I'd have lived in London for three years of my life, I feel like I would never have believed you. So the fact that I was able to live here is just a dream come true. But I'm so ready to move on and take you guys along with me. I wanna give you a quick tour, like an empty flat tour as I'm leaving. Um, and I can show you like the layout and everything properly because obviously I'm not gonna be living here anymore. So let's do it. Okay, we're gonna start outside the flat. So this is the lead up to my apartment, the corridor that I walk down. And now we're going to enter. So this is the first thing you see as, oh my God, I just bloody trapped my fingers in the door. Fuck, I hurt so bad. Anyway, where were we? This is the first room you enter into and this is the master bedroom. And this is the view. Can we just take a moment from my apartment? This is what I saw every day, but you guys never saw this because you know, it just gives you too much of an idea about where I lived. But now I'm leaving, I can show you. So this is the communal gardens, which honestly, I feel like I've seen about five people in there in the space of three years. They're not very well loved. And what's so crazy about this building here is when I moved in, this building was about this height. I'll insert a video or a photo if I've got one of how this view looked on the day that I viewed this property. And now look at the size of this and people live in there as well. As you can see, it's kind of like a U shape and all different flats. And then here is going to be more flats, but it's a very long process. But this room was my dressing room. It looks very, very bare right now. But this is where you guys saw me film all of my videos. The carpet is incredibly stained, but I'd like to say it was stained when I moved in because I moved in during COVID. They didn't change the carpet because I got a good deal on the place. My rent did actually end up going up, but um yeah i had to just live with the carpets and then this was my bathroom which you guys saw me in so many times you know here but it sounds so echoey and it's really gorgeous you know i love this marble it's all just so beautiful i'd also like to say that all of the marks you see on the walls i mean of course i've made some of them but they were also here when i moved in that was another thing they wouldn't paint the walls either anyway this is the main bathroom different vibe it's like a yellow marble with a chocolate marble two-tone effect there where the shower is and then this is the bath and then in here we have the tumble dryer the washing machine and the boiler then this was actually the second bedroom but this was the bedroom that i slept in so the only thing in here basically was my bed a mirror and side tables so this was the smaller room but look at these stains on the carpet i hid these with a rug but these were from the previous tenant so I'm just going to make sure they know that was not me because they are terrible. And then once again, the view from here. And then if we walk through to the kitchen area, this is where you saw me in many times. The countertops were a lot more cluttered when I lived here though. But this has like an island. My coat is on the floor. I've literally just thrown it. And then if I pan round, this is or was my living room. And so my sofa was here. Do you remember my arch mirror was here? And then I had another mirror over here that I used to take pictures in for Instagram. And then once again, the view from here. I can't say the views were that incredible. Like, you know, some people's views in London are like skyscrapers and very London vibes. This isn't necessarily very London vibes, but I'm not in the right area of London for it to be like that. Um, but if you were all wondering, this is Chelsea. It's on the cusp of like Fulham and Chelsea. And it's been such a amazing place to live. I mean, of course it had a few negatives along the way and I've definitely had a few issues with my apartment and stuff. But in terms of location, it's been brilliant. It's felt so safe and it's just really felt like home. And I'm really gonna miss it. But do you know what? As I've already mentioned, I'm so ready to move on. Um, but yeah, I just feel so grateful that I got to live here. And it's been, it's been brilliant. I guess all good things must come to an end. 
and better things, I truly believe, are coming. I'm just driving out of my underground for the last time. I feel a bit sad. Not sad, I just feel a bit emotional. Oh, through the barrier and then the gates open. I can't believe I'm leaving. It feels so weird. Well, after nearly crying, <laughs> I've just sat in Sainsbury's car park and eaten my burrito bowl, finally. And I actually need to go in here and go and get some bed sheets because I chucked everything away. So I need to go and get some new ones because if I'm hoping to sleep in a bed tonight, it'd be nice to have some bed sheets, wouldn't it? <laughs> Last time into my local Sainsbury's, I'm saying all this like I'm never gonna come here ever again. I mean, like, I am not moving that far, but why would I ever really come back to this Sainsbury's if I don't live near here? Probably won't. I love the fact that Sainsbury's has this whole kind of homeware section. It's so handy. Right, we need bed sheets. <laughs> They're cute on it for a single. Right, we need king, king, king. Why is it all for single? What is going on? Well, this will do for now. It's just something temporary to, you know, just see us by. So I just got a king set. I love this actually, it's like brushed cotton, it's really soft. And then I got a couple of bath mats as well. I'm gonna be truthful with you. I haven't showered. I'm in exactly the same clothes as yesterday. And this is the situation we're dealing with. The reason for that is because I didn't actually stay at the new house last night, so I didn't have any of my clothes or toiletries or anything. Reese and I are currently at B&Q. We're here to buy some paint, some dust sheets, roller brushes, and all of the things you need to do to redecorate. I feel like we've got a very big job at hand. I also think I need to put this hat on to disguise myself. Hey, my friend, it's minus two outside. <laughs> I'm coming. Wow, it's a big old B&Q, this is. Straight to the paint. Every day, just sort weaning. <laughs> that way, paints that way. Where are you going? Just gonna have a little butcher's. We need everything. We even need a. We need a lawnmower. Why are they thirty three pounds? You can get them from Powerland for a pound. Multicolored. Jesus. That must be a typo. I've got a dustpan and brush. Yeah. Could do. Honest to God, why are these £33? Shower sponge. <laughs> For all of the flooring choices, I feel like I said this to my mum yesterday. One thing about this house is I'm going to have to make so many decisions and I'm already scared about how hard the decision making is going to be. Like, I've always loved this kind of flooring, like this herringbone style flooring. But now I'm like, do I love it as much as I used to? Do I just prefer like a wood like this well like this color but just straight planks if that makes sense i like i can't make my mind up it's just gonna be yeah lots and lots of really big decisions which i'm very excited to make but a lot of pressure you know let me actually know in the comment section do you prefer this style of flooring the herringbone or regular like i don't know what this is called but like which is your favorite imagine like not the orangey wood color like both the same color what would you be your preference <laughs> Go on, use those muscles. All right, we've got the white matte paint. Just for now, everything is going to be white. Oh, look at all the colours. Wow. I, do you know what? Something I really want to do is I really want to make the downstairs toilet pink. It can be the only colour in the house, like this kind of pink. Or like a rose quartz sink. It's my vibe. I feel like such an adult <laughs> doing this kind of shopping. From Harrods to being cute. Sorry, look how cute that they do Hetty. And Henry. This is a mini one actually. These are actually really good hoovers, you know, one of the best hoovers around. Cannot go wrong with a Hetty or Henry. Stop, look how cute this is. Is this an orange tree or is this a lime tree? No, I feel like I need to get that. Can it live inside on a window ledge? We got a lot of stuff, like a lot of painting equipment, which is kind of scaring me because I've never painted anything before in my life. So this could be interesting. Also been to Waitrose and got some of the essentials like tea. Abby is about to come around my friend and I need to be able to make her a cup of tea, you know. Also got some snacks. Also got a couple of meal deals. <laughs> Mango, watermelon, all of the essentials. I'm also giving you a sneak peek of the kitchen. Honestly, don't have much to show you guys or how much you've already seen because I technically haven't started this vlog yet because I'm going to do a different intro and kind of, I'll have explained everything to the point of how we ended up here because it's a bit of a long story. So I feel like I'm going to do that at the beginning of the vlog. So you might have already seen a little bit of the house by then. Um, but I've got so much to show you. Like I feel slightly overwhelmed, but I feel so like 
excited about everything. Like, I, I can't get over it. I can't believe I'm stood in my own kitchen, like in my own home. It's the most bizarre feeling ever. Also, I need to show you the garage because this is where all of my stuff is, but I'm about to move it all into the main house. I'm actually thinking, like I don't really want to get too ahead of myself, but this is a really, really, really big garage. And I'm thinking that we're going to turn this into like a second living area. Kind of had some thoughts of maybe like a cinema room, but I'm thinking just more like a snug. But yeah, can you believe this is all of my stuff? Like, I'm sorry, I told you I had a lot of stuff. But this is all of mine. Like, what on earth? I'm currently trying to go through these boxes, which I have actually labelled. Look at this. There's so many just random stuff, though, which isn't so helpful. But I did label them all like coats. We've got skincare, perfume, lights and glass. So that's fragile. Look, I'm so bad at spelling. Like, I misspell everything and then I realise I've misspelled it anyway. Um, shoes. But I'm actually looking for an Allen key so we can put the sofa together. My tree <laughs> made it. I was actually going to leave this behind. Look how dusty it is. But um, here it is. Got a mirror. Oh, that's actually not my Hoover. Maybe they left that. How generous of them. <laughs> All of my mirrors. A second mattress. But hi everyone, I just thought you could see me there. Um, but yeah, you can't really tell on camera how big a space is, but it really is a very, very big garage. Like this is, you could easily get two cars in here. You can maybe even get three, you know, if they were small cars. Um, but yeah, it's a really big space. So hopefully we can kind of transform it into a really lovely living space. But I also don't want to get too ahead of myself. I make really big decisions too quickly because I haven't even lived in the space yet and I might think, actually, I want a garage. Truthfully, I don't think I do want a garage, but also I don't want to get rid of a garage if it's valuable for a resale point of view. Obviously, I'm not thinking about reselling this house anytime soon, but I'm guessing some point in the future, maybe five, ten years from now, I would think about it. So I don't want to like sort of get rid of things like a garage if it's more valuable. Anyway, let's find what I'm looking for. It would also be great if I could find my camera batteries or the charger because my camera is about to die. <laughs> We've got a real builder's bum going on over here. <laughs> Shake that ass. Watch yourself. Shake that ass. We're waiting for you to shake your ass. <laughs> also, guys, I have to show you this because I thought this is kind of insane, but can you see this little dot on the ceiling just here? And if I go a little bit closer and I zoom in, can you see, is it gonna focus? It's a ladybird. Or a ladybug. And I saw somewhere just recently that ladybugs mean good luck. And this one, if it's true what they say about ladybugs being the age of their spots, this one is very old. But how did this just turn up and fly through the window when it's torrential rain and actually like 9pm at night? What? And I just googled, what do ladybugs mean? It says, good luck. Many cultures believe it is a recogni- Okay, that was terrible. <laughs> Recognising that ladybug as a positive symbol of good luck and new beginnings. In fact, the belief that ladybugs are associated with these and similar qualities, such as goodness and positivity, is nearly universal. From Slavic European to Asian cultures and Native American. I'm so superstitious and this is just kind of weirdly freaking me out, but in a good way. Welcome to day... Is it day three in the Big Brother house? I'm so unsure at what has even been said in this vlog. Honestly, I've been picking my camera up at the weirdest times. And I think the last time I saw you was when I saw the ladybug last night, which still not over that. Today, my mum and dad have just arrived. Just go down a little bit, give a bit of headroom. <laughs> yeah, we're all good. <laughs> just come over on the old M25. If you live long enough to drive that, it's absolutely crazy. But um, yeah, lovely, lovely little place she's got. A lot of work to do. But um, fair play to her, her first house. <laughs> I bet many of you experienced that and then many of you are gonna experience it. It's a beautiful feeling. I'm so pleased for her. But yeah, we're just having like a day here today. Mum's brought up a dinner, so we've got something in the slow cooker. Even my sister's coming up as well with her little dog. Reese is upstairs painting. 
So yeah, it's all go. I don't want to give you an update of the living room, but something I didn't do was show you how it looked before I put the furniture in. It's kind of awkward because I wanted to, a part of me wants to like show you everything and give you a house tour and show you around, but because obviously this is my home, I kind of feel like there's certain things that I should not show too much. Um, but I have, I'll go and show you what the living room looks like now. It basically looks like how my flat looked because it's all the same furniture. The candles are back on the coffee table. And it all looks pretty much the same. But tidier. But tidier, yeah, yeah, and a little bit more space. We've got a lot of boxes going on in here, but if I take you through to the living area, this is what we're working with. So I haven't bought any new furniture whatsoever because things are being redone. And I didn't want to go and buy new furniture and then it not fit in when the place has changed. Does that make sense? So I'm just dealing with what I've got for now. But you might remember this was actually the end of my sofa at one point. I actually took it off a long while ago because I felt like my sofa was too long, but it just been in my bedroom propped against the wall for the longest time ever. So I've kind of done it like a makeshift chaise long. Truthfully, look, if I show you underneath this blanket here, there is actually like, hang on, let me show you. It looks, it looks pretty ugly because this bit is actually meant to be attached to the end of this sofa, if that makes sense. But do you know what? We'll put a blanket there and no one will know. Like they'll never know. Okay, that looks a mess now. But yeah, this is the situation here. I need to get some um, lamps, some bulbs for the lamps here. And over here is the fireplace. You see that the previous owners had a TV on the wall. And I've covered it with some flowers because I don't have a bracket for my current TV. My mum has put my cards on the mantelpiece, which is very cute. I've got one from my mum and dad, my best friend, Abby. Funny enough, my mum's best friend, Debbie, got me exactly the same card as she did and she didn't even know. Um, so that was cute. And then this is from my auntie Jackie and uncle Peter. So that's very, very lovely. And um, I actually really love this fireplace by the way, but I'm thinking I might change it to like marble. I have so many ideas for this house. Like I'm so excited. And as you can see, my coffee table was pretty much how it was in the apartment. I still have my three seater sofa. And then over in the corner here, I've just got the little armchair. Um, my mirror and stuff is still in the garage. These are all of the boxes that have actually, well, some of them still have stuff in. Everything is a little bit, it's a little bit all over the place. I told you my mum has bought dinner with her. Can I open it? Yeah. Okay, what is it? Mushroom stroganoff, mushroom and chicken stroganoff. Stroganoff? <laughs> stroganoff, is that what it is, mum? Yeah. Oh, delicious. Sorry, the camera will be the camera all steamed up then. She also bought this, which is from Marks and Spencers. You guys know my mum is like the rep for Marks and Spencers. <laughs> <laughs> she is their biggest customer. I actually saw this in there um, last week and I really wanted to buy it, but thought it's not really quite Easter, but I'm glad you got me that. Look, it's an assortment of all of these different things. I had said today I was gonna start eating healthier again, but um, maybe, maybe that'll be next week. Um, also, some salty snacks. Abby actually got me these daffodils, which are very cute. And just a little bit of, you know, decor on the side there, pasta, just all for display. We're also gonna open a bottle of champagne today to celebrate, but this ice bucket was actually a gift for my 30th birthday from my auntie and my uncle. And it came with a bottle of Laurent Perrier champagne, which is in the fridge. My mum bought this one with, no, this is also from them. It is, yeah, that's a housewarming one. And okay, know, this is the housewarming one. The other one is in the fridge, but I was saving it. It came as a set. So it came with the ice bucket and the glasses. And I was saving it to open when I finally bought a house. And obviously I turned 30 over a year ago. Sorry, I'm making myself older than I am nearly a year ago. And at that point, I didn't even know I was buying a house. Like I didn't know anything. Um, but I just thought, I'm just gonna save it for a special occasion. And that is gonna be the occasion, like I manifested the house. And then we're gonna pop the bottle tonight. So, popping bottles. Look at these beautiful flowers. Can, can someone tilt them towards me a little bit? Actually, but then you'll be on camera, mum. You don't no. want it. <laughs> I'm, 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 Dad, oh. tilt the flowers. Actually, I've got longer arms. So Look they're, 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 at these. Stephanie and her boyfriend oh. bought these for the housewarming gift. Look at them. The wow, they're amazing. They? Thank you so much. They're actually unreal. Uh, yes, Chris. I've got loads of vases as well. So oh, little card. <laughs> Hello, 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 h
Mm. Tastes mm. divine though. The popcorn. Mm -mm -mm. What's this? Diet's going well. I think oh you yeah. Oh, like <laughs> People just get to me. Mm -hmm. Have a stack in my hand. I just keep adding. Might help you, yeah. What's this bunny thing? Mm -hmm. Oh god, Dad, you'll yeah, love yeah. that. Buy that oh. one. You will love that. <laughs> Can I do a taste test? What am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> this is delicious, and she can't see it. Look, she doesn't realise it's there. Oh dear, 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 dear. Do you want to eat a sweet? <laughs> You'll love that. That's nice, isn't it? It's like the perfect <laughs> amount of chewy. Dad's like the king of gummy sweets. Mm. And I'm I just... <laughs> 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 Is it 10-10? It'd be as fat as a pig, really. <laughs> 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 mm. Nice, though. 10-10? What well, is that? 10, ten Dad. Mm. Oh, bless mm. you. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Jesus. 10 out of 10, m &S. From the sweet connoisseur himself. We've moved the flowers now so you can see them a little bit better. But how gorgeous are they? Oh, they are actually amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. You need to go into a vase. Now in Tesco's, Mum's got her scan and shop. Is that what it's da, called? Da, da. Is that what it's called? Shop Scanner. and scan. Oh, shop and scan. We've got all of the essentials. Mango, Mango No, you don't need that. Maybe some waffles. Some frozen jacket potatoes. I love those frozen jacket potatoes. No, do you know what? Went through a stage of like everyone ate those little moons, didn't they? And now I'm just. Did someone take them? Oh my god. No way. Right, the car is loaded up. We're in Stephanie's car, so the boot space is a little bit minimal. Sorry, we got there. Honk if you're horny. <laughs> the moment has come. We're opening a bottle of champagne. Everyone just said they wanted coffees, and my dad was like, well, maybe champagne? <laughs> Cheers everyone. Cheers. Here's to the new home. Happy days. Cheers, congratulations. Thank you very much. Also, cheers to Angus. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, gorgeous boy. It's Angus's birthday, my brother. He's missing from the from today because, well, you already know, he moved to Australia. Although he's not actually quite got to Australia yet. He's still in Bali. But today is his, is his 28 today. But actually. he might be there for the next 14 years. <laughs> he decided he'd rather stay there. <laughs> No, he looks like he's having a great time, to be fair. Mum has just been to Tesco's and bought some bird feed. And look who's on the bird feeder. <laughs> a Mr. Squirrel. Aww. Oh, that is actually very cute. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to feed the squirrels, but here come the birds, though. See, look. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's another squirrel. It's on the other one. Oh, there's so many. No, no. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. But they, they struggle getting into those things, but obviously. It's, it's I want to get you a bird feeder that. Oh a, no. A seed feeder. The problem was I couldn't get seed on it. Squirrel infestation. Or seed in it, I should say. Well, he's got a bushy tail in the half, hasn't he? Wow, he's really nice. Look at them both. They're going to eat all the seeds, though. Oh, it doesn't matter, does it? I'm going to. I'll send oh, you a. Look at it eating like that. Okay. So now we're back in present time and here we are in my makeshift living room. You will recognise all of this furniture from my apartment. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that very, I mean, was it manic? I don't really know, but it was a very sort of like bitty vlog, wasn't it? It was spread through a number of days. I don't know how much I actually vlogged. Truthfully, I haven't even edited this vlog together yet. Um, but I'm hoping it's been all right. But before we wrap this up, I have a story to tell you, but I also want to show you how good the light is in this house. I mean, you've already seen it at the beginning of the vlog, but look how gorgeous this is. So this is what is currently the dining area. But funny thing is, I viewed this house on two very dark mornings in November, and I was really worried it was going to be a dark house. And my mum had said, no, look, it's just a dark day. It won't be a dark house. And I did check and it said that the sun rised at the front of the house and it sets at the back. But they were so right, it is currently quarter to four and the light in here is beautiful. And if you know me, you will know how much lighting <laughs> affects my life. Like the fact that this place is gonna be sunny in the afternoons and sunny in the mornings, as long as the sun is actually out, which isn't that often in the UK, but we're heading into spring, so hopefully it'll be a lot more. But it just has made my life complete, because that was something I was really nervous about this house. I was thinking, oh, imagine if it's just always dark. It's just gonna be so depressing, but it's not. It's 
bloody lovely and I'm so so happy and I've got really 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 big plans for this place well I say really 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 big truthfully it doesn't need anything doing to it like I could just move in the walls all need freshening up like you'll see above the fireplace they've had a tv there which I'm planning on putting a tv back there but the, you know it's just been lived in there's scuff marks and things like that but overall it doesn't need anything doing but I do definitely have some plans and um and we are going to definitely be doing some work to the house Reese has already been painting the walls and stuff, so like we're well on the way. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be doing a bit of renovating as well, which is so exciting. I feel like it's gonna be so fun, like vlogging the whole process, but I'm gonna talk about that all in the next vlog, because I feel like this is gonna end up being a really long video. But before I finish, I want to quickly just tell you a story. And there is no doubt that I am definitely a little bit like superstitious. I'm very much into manifestation and I just love anything like that. So I know a lot of people don't. If you don't, maybe skip this story. But if you do, stick with me. So the day I moved out of my apartment, you already know, the removals came in the morning. Then the cleaners turned up. Then I actually went and got my nails done. And Reese had come to this house to come and offload all of the stuff with the removals, guys. And I then came back from my nail appointment and I was walking up the corridor to my house and it's important for me to tell you that my neighbour who lived opposite me is a guy. So this is definitely nothing to do with him, it's not personally his. And my apartment was also the end of the corridor so it wasn't an area that people walk past because you can't go any further than my apartment and as I was approaching my door I saw something shiny on the floor and in my head I thought it was a 50p or like a 10p and as I got closer to it obviously I could see it a little bit more I saw it was silver and I was just convinced it was a 50p and truthfully I was going to leave it because you know it wasn't mine but it's always lucky to pick up money and as it was closer to my door than my neighbours as I went down to pick it up, I realised it wasn't actually money. It was, in fact, this little coin. Well, it's not a coin. It's like a silver tag. And then I realised it said something. So as I was down on my knees, like, I'll literally demonstrate what happened. So imagine I've gone down like this. I've looked at it. And I'm quite a slow reader. Some of you might already know. And as I read it, I was like, that is, to me, insane. And this is what it said. It says, she believed she could... So she did. And I know this might be a little bit far-fetched, like, you know, and I know a lot of you will be thinking, Freya, honestly, this is like, get a grip. But I genuinely feel like this was from the universe because who the hell else, like, dropped this outside of my apartment door the day I was moving out for me to, like, pick it up and see it? And I felt like it was like a sign. Like, I believed I could, and I did. And I know, like, a lot of you might be thinking like, all you did was buy a house, hun. It's not like you're flipping saved the world, which is true. I didn't. But I just feel like, because this is something I've been working towards for so long, and I truly believe that I could do it, but it's taken such a long time for this to happen. And the fact that like, I found this the day that it did happen, I just felt like it was like a such a sign. Like I believed I could and I did. And I have no idea where this came from. Like no idea. But I feel like it needs to go in like a special little box and I'm gonna keep it forever. So it is probably just a coincidence and someone like must have dropped it. Um, but I feel like it's a very nice coincidence, you know? Anyway, I am now going to leave this vlog here. I know I've said thank you so many times in this video, but truly thank you so, so much for being here, for watching my videos, for all of your support. I love you all beyond belief. And I am so beyond excited to take you on this next chapter in my life. And in the next vlog, we're going to be unpacking boxes. I'm going to tell you about all of the ideas we have for the house. And yeah, I just can't wait to share everything with you. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great week. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Have a good one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.